So, Brandon, I mean, I want to start off with getting to know you. This is all about you right now because I just found that you so fascinating when I was looking you up and doing some research about you, and I love your fashion sense. So let's start off with where are you from? What's been your life journey so far? Oh, my gosh. Well, that's my favorite introduction anyone's ever done for me. So I'm just going to take that snippet and just put it <laughs> as the start of my reel. So thank you for that. Well, I was born and raised in Fresno, California, which is just about three hours north from Los Angeles. And yeah, from a young age, it's funny. I mean, I feel like my parents specifically tried to put me into soccer is what I remember. And I just remember like really not knowing what to do with the ball. I feel like I was just kind of running around and soccer is pretty like self-explanatory now that I look back, but I just wasn't into it, you know? And I think back a lot about the day my grandma, who I call my honey, took me to a production of Oliver the Musical. And I was just like, transfixed. I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that. And I was eight years old. And, you know, thank God that happened because it changed my entire life. But it really started with that day. And after that, I kind of dove in head first to the theater. Luckily in my hometown, there was a wealth of community theater opportunities. and. I mean, it was everything. They were my family, they were my friends, they were my teachers, and I just, I soaked up everything I could, like a little gay sponge. <laughs> so, I mean, now, is was it just acting that you were like, okay, yes, or was it everything? Singing, dancing, you know, juggling even, no? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the juggling might not be my strong suit, but everything else, yes. I, you know, kind of started with musical theater, and I think it's such a great place for anyone who wants to get into acting to start because, you know, it kind of sharpens all of those different sides of yourself. You know, you work on the singing, you work on your voice, you work on your body movement and your physicality. And I really love musical theater. And it's kind of neat because, you know, This Is Me Now, the film being my big break, it's not been lost on me, you know, it's a musical. And I started with musicals and kind of, you know, have tried to do the TV and film route and I've done some stage work as well. But it's been so neat to kind of celebrate getting back to my roots and being in a musical film, you know, obviously on a different level than when I was starting in Fresno, but to kind of get to get back to that, you know, because those really were my roots. Wow. What has the response been in your hometown? I mean, have you been back home? Is there any reason to go back home? Yes, you know, I love my hometown. Fresno's a beautiful place and, and a lot of amazing people. And I just went back last weekend for a little um, This Is Me Now premiere party that my family threw. And so that was special. And I try to go back fairly often, but everyone has just been insanely supportive. You know, I've been thinking a lot about too, how, you know, the journey of being a performer or an artist in any way you want community. You want people to go through it with. It means nothing, you know, if you're going through it alone. You want people to kind of be able to walk alongside you and help you find balance in those moments where you're jarred, you know? And I feel so lucky to have so many friends from my home that have been that for me, you know, pillars and mentors. It's been amazing just to feel the support from family and friends from all over the place. It's been crazy overwhelming but crazy I love crazy it. good yes so when you look back in your journey you know there's some moments where or doors that have opened or closed that just kind of stand out to you I think of that for myself so were there any particular doors that opened or closed that for you that brought you to this moment mm. Such a good question. I really believe that everything happens for a reason. And I think you can choose to believe that, even if you have doubts about that. And I think it's better to believe that than the alternative. Mm -hmm. I choose to believe, you know, every single thing that happened, good and bad in my life, led me to this moment. And if one thing was different, I believe that could have changed the trajectory of everything, you know? So I think you have to kind of befriend your past mm -hmm. and, I think, you know, This Is Me Now, the film is all about that. You know, it's about coming to terms with who you are and celebrating yourself and realizing there's an inner child in you that always is rooting for you, you know, and that's your compass. 
that's your compass in life. Follow that compass and you'll end up where you're meant to be. You know, but there were a lot of doors that opened that I never expected. And I think life can surprise you. You know, I also had a lot of auditions that didn't work out. And, you know, that's hard as an actor. It's hard because you really want them. You want every single one of them. But I'm learning, you know, the longer you try, the luckier you get. Mm. And I think, you know, you have to be in the game. And again, if one of those roles had come about, maybe this wouldn't have happened, you know? So it's it's kind of making peace with all of it and recognizing the races with yourself. And there's no end to it. This is a journey. Being an artist is a lifelong journey. Wow. I mean, and what has been some of the best advice that you've been given, you know, throughout this journey? It's interesting. I actually, we had an after party for This Is Me Now. We premiered two weeks ago at the Dolby, which was an insane moment. And I was actually talking to Jennifer after the film at the after party. And we had a documentary that just came out yesterday and a trailer was released for it. And in the trailer, she says, I've been afraid every step of my career, but I just don't let people know and I haven't let it stop me. And I told her how powerful that was to hear. Yeah. And it was, you know, there were a billion people around us. So it, it was so chaotic, but we had this little intimate moment and my other co-star was there. And Jennifer just was like, yeah, you know, I've been scared every step, but I don't let it define me. And she also kind of talked about how it's so important to be in touch with your vulnerability as an artist and how not everyone can do that or everyone would be an actor or an artist, you know, not everyone can do that. And so it's the superpower, you know, to be vulnerable. But I think you have to come to a place of radical self-love with yourself. But I think that was such great advice from her. Do it scared, you know, do it anyway. And just don't let people know. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. Yes. And I mean, you know, it takes a certain level of bravery, you know, to come up and show up as yourself and just be blatantly yourself and unapologetically yourself in this yeah. avenue. So uh, kudos to you for, you know, just even stepping up to the plate. I mean, seriously, bravo, you know. Oh, thank you, my love. Thank you. That, you know, opening and walking through that door because not everybody will do that. So <laughs> You know, you. well, I think it's, you know, it's embracing the things that are different about you. That's mm -hmm. your superpower. I, for so long, you know, people tried to put me in boxes, you know, as a performer and as an artist, they think they do that. And I think you have to burn the boxes. I love that. So what kind of boxes have they tried putting you in? You know, growing up as a member of the LGBTQIA plus community, it was hard. You know, there were moments that were tough and I have a memory, you know, of a director telling me, well, you know, you can't really embrace parts of yourself like that because it'll box you in. You won't be able to play all roles. And I've realized, you know, in 2024 and through the JLo of it all, that it is a superpower. All of the things that people try to otherize you for are your superpowers, you know? And it's like you were just saying to step into that bravely and boldly. And you will be amazed the doors that will open, I think, just from doing that. I've been amazed. So how did this door open for This Is Me Now? So, I mean, walk me through, like, was it just, it, it appeared on your email, it appeared in your doorstep, someone knocked on your door, how did it happen? Yes, JLo came to my door, she knocked, she had a bottle of Delola and she said, please come on this journey with me. <laughs> that's how I'm gonna, I'm gonna reconceptualize it. Cause that's what I wanna believe that. <laughs> That'll be for the next movie. Exactly. Um, but this one was really neat. And, you know, it came in such an ordinary moment. And I think that's such a reminder to let life surprise you. There's so much ahead for all of us if you choose to believe that. You know, I'm someone who really thinks the best is yet to come, always. Whenever someone makes me give a toast, that's what I toast. The best is yet to come. And it's like I said, it was in a very ordinary moment. I was actually super sick with COVID. And I was here in this very apartment in Hollywood. And normally I would go get a big audition like that professionally taped and I couldn't because I was sick. So I shot it here with my partner and I was kind of anxious because I felt like I wasn't doing as well as I normally would. And I remember I was coughing a lot and I worked 
sipping tea into the scene because I thought, oh, my throat's hurting, but I also just feel like maybe it'll work. And it worked. And, you know, the rest is history. Little details of things that you can add of yourself, you know. Then we continued the audition process and callback process. And then about three or four weeks later, I got a call at like 9 p.m. at night from my agent that I had booked the role and literally sat on the floor and just cried. You know, I was overwhelmed with 20 years of hard work leading up to that moment. And I wanted to give it like the weight and the respect it deserved. And then five days later, I was on set with JLo, glammed in a sound stage in downtown LA. And I don't know. And then it just, it just happened. Oh my gosh. I love this story. That is so beautiful. I mean, we have to kind of give that a moment, yeah. you know, let it sink in. And I think like, it's so encouraging for other artists out there to hear this journey, hear that, you know, it happens. You know, I think it's so beautiful. Thanks so much for sharing that. I love that. Thank you. Well, I believe, you know, it's it's so possible for everyone. It's like I said earlier, the longer you stay in the game, the luckier you get. And I think it's just carrying on through the good and the bad, carrying on in whatever that means to you and just, you know, enjoying the process. You have to befriend it. I'm very big too on like energy and frequency. And I think you have to find the right frequency for yourself. It's like tuning into a radio station. So how was the movie described to you? I mean, you know, when you first auditioned and what was the description of your role as the lover? Yes, the lover. Well, essentially JLo's gay best friend in the film, which is still crazy to say out loud. You know, I still get like tingles thinking about it. And yeah, sort of a confidant of hers who was based off of someone in her real life which is neat and something I don't even think I've actually said yet, but it was based off of someone in her life. She has a really amazing core circle of friends. Mm -hmm. And I was really inspired that she wanted to showcase, you know, LGBTQIA plus talent in it too, you know, that it was important to her because she's a fierce ally and advocate and it was just such a flabbergasting experience to get to take that on. And, you know, I wanted to really stand for my community and do something unique and special. And I think the role is really neat too, because it kind of challenges societal norms, you know, wearing makeup and looking fabulous and being a glamazon in his own right. So that was really neat. But the project was described to me as sort of a musical movie. And they were very specific about that. This is going to be sort of a pop opera. And when you see it, it's very that, you know, it's very sexy and edgy. And the goal was to create a new genre, which is kind of insane to think about in 2024. We think it's all been done before. She didn't want this to be a music video. She didn't want it to be a full length two hour movie. She wanted to create her own pop opera odyssey. And it is a whole new genre of its own. And I think it's going to kind of redefine, you know, the modern musical. Yes, and it's so artistic. I mean, that's what struck me when I watched. I was like, wow, this is art right here. Yes, yeah, <laughs> very much so. So how do you describe your character? I mean, I think the lover is, you know, a representation of someone in her life who's very special to her. And I think also someone who's sort of like part of a Greek chorus a bit in the film. You know, we're there to help guide her and we're there through all of the different men that come along. And you really see that, you know, I think in the story, we're there through the weddings, we're there to kind of give her a friend intervention. And then in the end, I love the last scene, even though it's so short, there's a big wedding outside and that's sort of a boho wedding and one of the friends gets married. And we're all there and she kind of reflects on how the love from herself and the love from her friends was always enough. You know, and that was the journey of finding yourself. And so I think, you know, we're a really grounding force in the film. I think we kind of add a lot of the plot to it of helping her out and giving advice. And, you know, it was just such an honor to get to play one of her best friends in it and to get to kind of work with her that closely. It was as magical as you would think it would be. <laughs> I can only imagine because, I mean, 
not everyone gets a chance to be even that close to Jennifer Lopez. And you did that in several days or how long was the shoot? How long did so you guys- we shot about a month and a half and I shot for two weeks. So that was pretty neat, but they, yeah, all over Los Angeles, which was insane. Crazy cool locations. So it wasn't all CGI because it almost gives that vibe. Like, is it just in a big green screen room and you guys are just there and they just change everything around you? But they, you're saying that they actually change locations. Yeah, well, a lot was shot on the green screen. Definitely you have that sort of Marvel Dune feel meets Moulin Rouge. But we shot at some amazing locations. A lot of the homes were real homes. And that was insane. I mean, we shot at several mansions. Wow. And like, I didn't know mansions like this existed. I mean, we're talking like McMansions. I mean, it was insane, you know? And that was really neat too, to kind of be on location. And I think that brought, you know, another layer to it too. It really kind of made it even more epic and grand, you know, kind of the scale of the sets. Did you have much influence in how you got to play your character or was there a lot of ad-libbing or was it very like kind of stick to the script kind of vibe? Well, I love this question because, you know, this was a huge part of the production. I went in thinking it was going to be very like by the book and it was day one, you know, right after we met Jennifer and she was so sweet and introduced herself to us. Meanwhile, documentary cameras are rolling while we're prepping before we even start filming. So it was so meta. You were never off camera, essentially, which was crazy to think about now. I loved that she came to play. She really wanted to improv and have fun. And it was like, it reminded me of being in a play when I was nine years old. She was like, okay, we're gonna do it as written. And then let's just banter. And the majority of the improv we did got put into the film. And that was amazing to see. I mean, that was definitely one of those moments where I was like, wow, you know, you always have to bring yourself to any project you do because you don't know what's going to be needed. You've got to bring those little special skills you have, special little quirks. So we definitely improv a lot with her. And she was amazing, you know, to improvise with and so fun as a scene partner. You know, you want someone that's there to have fun and play. And we kind of had to build this chemistry very quickly all together. Was there any preparation before you even, you know, got into the set? Was there, you know, meetings or any kind of screen reads? Well, we had about five days before we started shooting after I got the call that I was cast, which is insane thinking back it was such a whirlwind but it was so exciting it was one of those moments in life where you just have to jump and I think you have to get yourself mentally ready for those moments so when they come you can jump you know you kind of got to find that frequency yeah. and you know we kind of dived right in we had costume fittings those next couple of days we were getting script rewrites and then the very first day we kind of had a read with her and that was amazing you know she would come up and she would give us little notes and she would kind of help. And it was like taking an acting class from Jennifer Lopez, you know, kind of giving you like, try it this way, try it that way. And she was just so giving in that way. So loving. And she just has such sharp instincts, you know, as an artist. And we have to yeah. respect her hustle, right? Ugh. <laughs> Very much. So did you get a chance to get a sneak peek of her new song, Can't Get Enough, while you were on the set too? And how crazy is it that you were going to be in the music video for it too? I know. Well, that was wild. I mean, we were hearing the music throughout the whole process. So it was funny. I would come home from set and I'd be singing the songs, rebound, rebound, rebound. And my boyfriend would be like, are you making up a song right now? And I was like, no, this is maybe like an undisclosed J-Lo song that hasn't been released yet. <laughs> I was like, it would just be stuck in my head because the music was so incredible. And so that was neat. You know, we got a tease of the album a year before it came out in the world, you know, and it's been number one and it's doing so incredibly. And, you know, it was neat to, yeah, kind of get a glimpse of it before anyone else. And we had a rap party she threw at her home for us after the film ended. You know, we got to hear more of the music in the film. We got to watch part of the beginning of it. This was a year ago now. And yeah, I mean, it kind of clued us in even more to, wow, this is going to be something unlike anyone's ever seen before. This is going to be wild. 
That's so cool. So let's talk about the premiere. And you were serving a look, L-E-W-K look. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about it. How was it? I mean, the energy, I mean, we were talking about energy. So how was the energy in just that moment, that experience? I mean, it might have been the best day of my life. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it was so epic was really, really in tune with myself that day. And I tried to really take everything in because it was wild, you know, to just kind of get to experience your first movie premiere. And it was at the Dolby in Hollywood. They shut down the street for it. So it was so wild. Even just getting in, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And, you know, it, it was a huge tent and it was just packed with, you know, fans and photographers and interviewers and, we all just kind of got to celebrate the work we did, you know? And my outfit was designed by my cousin, Stephen Lewis, who's an up and coming designer. And he had designed it three weeks prior to the premiere. He what? sketched something for me and I was gonna wear a different designer. And then he reached out and he was like, I really think this would be epic for you. Oh. And I took a chance and it was the right call. <laughs> yes. I just felt the most beautiful I'd ever felt. And, you know, it was kind of this really glamorous look. I kind of wanted to represent my character being the lover. And Valentine's Day was the following day. So I was in all red. I had a train. And I kind of wanted it to be a level up moment, too. You know, I'm really, really into fashion and bending gender norms with fashion as well. And, you know, it was a really special moment. I kind of felt like, wow, like this is an arrival moment. And I wanted it to be that. And I planned for it to be that. And it became that, you know, it was a manifestation come true for sure. Oh my gosh. I love talking to people like yourself because there's just so much amazing energy and I'm so beyond happy for <laughs> When you make it like this and you're just so joyous and I'm just like, yes, give you more. I just love this. You bring so much joy out. So how was it watching the finished film? I mean, that's got to be surreal. It was wild. I mean, we were in the Dolby. So I was like, the first time in the Dolby, actually, except from seeing it on TV for the Oscars. And it was just surreal. You know, our cast was all sitting and it was filled. The rest of the theater was filled with fans. And so to kind of get to hear the reaction and see it on the big screen, you know, at one of the most famous theaters in the world, it was a pinch me moment, you know, something I'll remember for the rest of my life. And then we walked across the street after and got to have a gathering at the Roosevelt Hotel, which is also such a historic Hollywood spot. And, you know, it, it did, it felt like a moment of arrival. You know, it kind of felt like something I'd been dreaming up since I was eight years old. And somehow it like happened and I was there and I was there with people who loved me, who got to come and support me that day. And I was there with JLo and Ben Affleck's over there and all of our cast is here. And it just was like, you know, I never want to take things for granted. I'm still that kid from Fresno, you know, with a dream. And it just felt like finally, you know, my moment and that it's here and it's coming and and it also felt like the start of a new chapter. You know, it felt like a new moment in time. And I feel like I've led with that energy following it, but it was legitimately probably the best night of my life, very much so. <laughs> what does Jennifer Lopez represent to you in terms of her career in music? Uh, I mean, you said this earlier, but I think her hustle and her drive are incomparable in this industry. You know, if you watch our documentary that just came out, which I highly recommend to anyone who hasn't seen it, if you're an artist, if you're just a professional in any career, you know, she made this film happen herself. She funded it after a major studio backed out. And she invested $20 million to make it herself. That's and true. I thought that was a rumor. Wow. She invested $20 million to make it herself and it paid off, you know? And so I think there's a big lesson in there to invest in yourself in life and in big ways and small ways. And I think with her music career, she's just always thought outside of the box. 
you know, she does not prescribe to what everyone else is doing. And, you know, I think it's made her a global superstar, you know, and someone who will, will be remembered forever, you know, someone who's just changed the landscape, you know, for Latin performers, for artists everywhere. But I think I've definitely been most inspired by her drive and her hustle. You know, she takes it seriously, you know, and you have to, even though it's play, you know, you can take the play seriously. I've never seen anyone with that kind of work ethic. And it's changed the way I approach work and my career. I can't say enough positive things about her genuinely. You know, she was kind of like a fairy godmother. She granted me this opportunity and you know, even after the production wrapped, she continued to include us on things and events. And we got to celebrate it over the last year with her. And so it was really neat to kind of see her on a quieter, more personal level in that way. But she's she's everything. So what's next for you? Next big dream? Speak it out into the universe. Ah, <laughs> I know we got to manifest together. I can feel exactly. the good energy, the good energy on this exactly. call. <laughs> I'm a big dreamer. I'm a big manifester. And I think, you know, you got to say out loud what you want. You know, I have a campaign with Sarah V skincare that's coming out in April that I'm really excited about. I'm really into skincare. So that'll be epic. And then I have another film coming out written and directed by Luke Besson, who wrote Taken One, Two and directed the third one. And so that's going to be really epic. And then some other like secret projects in the works and, you know, some different things that have been bubbling for a while. But, you know, I'd love to continue to play roles that highlight the different marginalized communities that I'm a part of, you know, being Hispanic and, and also, you know, being part of the LGBTQIA plus community. I'd love to do another movie this year. And I would also love to do a television series. I think it would be so neat to take on a role and grow with it over time. I think I'm seeing, you know, how much we evolve as humans. And I think to apply that to a role over years of getting to play it, like the cast of Friends or the Big Bang Theory, I'd love to just kind of soak in a role and let it influence myself and let myself influence the role, you know? So truly, I, I think the best is yet to come. Yes, I believe it. I mean, I think your energy, you are just attracting so much. And it was such a pleasure to talk with you. You just shine. Keep on shining. Please, you know, follow me on the socials at Brandon Delson and keep up with the fashion and the fun. That's the way to do it. And, you know, make sure to check out our film, everyone on Amazon Prime. This is me now.